So then, we are nearly done now, but there's one or two more things I do want to do. First of all, I want to be able to check the current user who is logged in, if they are logged in, on every GET request for new pages on this website. And that way, we could feed that user information into our views to do things like display a user email in the header when they are logged in. Now, to do this, we're going to create another custom middleware function. So let's open this auth middleware file, first of all. And this is where we have the require auth function already. What I'm going to do is a little comment down here saying check current user and then create a new function. And I'll call this check user. And I'll set this equal to a function where we take in the request object, the response object, and also the next method to move on to the next middleware in the stack. All right, so the first thing I want to do is get the token from the cookies, much like we do here. So let me grab that and paste it right here. And then we need to check, does this token actually exist? Because if it doesn't exist, then this is just going to be undefined. So then we don't want to do anything like inject any data into the view. So we need to say if token, like so. And then if that's the case, we're going to try to verify that token. Now, if that's not the case, we're going to do something else, but we'll come to that later on. So if the token exists, we need to then verify the token, much like we did up here. So again, I'm going to grab all of this stuff here where we verify the token with our current secret and we fire a callback function. So let me copy all of that and paste it inside here. So we say jwt.verify to verify the token against our secret. Then we fire a callback function when it tries to do this. And if there's an error, then the token is not verified. And right here, we're logging that error message to the console. Now, this time, we don't want to redirect them. Instead, I'm just going to say next and move on to the next handler because we don't want to do anything else at this point. There's no user logged in because the token is not valid. Therefore, we don't want to inject anything into the views. We just say next, carry on as you were. OK, make sense? So that's the case if there's an error. If there's not an error down here, at this point, this is where we can be sure there is a user, a valid user, logged in. So what we want to do is get that user information, now the email from that user, so that we can then inject it into views in the future. So how do we do that? Well, on this decoded token right here, we have a payload. And in that payload, we have an ID. Now, we can see that because when we create that token using this create token method in the auth controller, we say JWT sign, and this is the payload. And this is the ID of the user. And we pass that into the function when we create the token. So that's the ID of the user, right? We have that now on this decoded token. So what we could do is find that user in the database with the ID, and when we get it, we can inject that user into a view. So let's do that. I'm going to now say let user equal to await, and we want to use the user model, and then say find by ID. Now, do we have the user model inside here? Yes, we do, so we can use it. So user, and then find by ID, and we pass in the ID that we want to find the user for. Now, we have that on this decoded token. So let me paste that in here and say dot ID. That's how we grab it from the token. All right, so this is going to find us now a user. Now, because we used a wait right here, this callback function needs to be asynchronous, so async in front of that. So now we have this user right here. We want to inject that into our views. But how do we do that? Well, we can use something called locals on the response. So I could say response.locals and then say dot whatever property or variable I want to make accessible from the views. So I could create one called XYZ if I wanted to and set it equal to hello. And then if I try to output XYZ in the view, if all of this passes, then it will output hello in the view. Now, I don't want to do that because that's just bonkers. Instead, I want to create a property called user, which is going to be available inside the views and set that equal to the user that we get right here. So now inside the views, if we have a valid user and we found that user in the database, then what we're doing is passing that user into the view so we can access properties on it like the email and we could output that maybe in the header. All right.
So at this point, once we've made this accessible inside the views, we just say next, and then the next handler is going to fire. And that could be to send back a page. It could be anything because this is going to apply this middleware to every get request for every page. So it would just fire the handler for that page. We've done what we needed to here. We've injected the data into the view if they're logged in. Now, right here, what we need to do is explicitly set this locals user property to be null because we're going to check for a value inside the view later on and we're going to evaluate this if the user doesn't exist on the locals then it's just going to throw some kind of error so we're explicitly giving it this user property and setting it equal to null now that i also want to do this if the token doesn't exist right because if it doesn't exist as well down here in this else clause, it also means they're not logged in and we don't have any user information. So we just set that equal to null and then say next like so. All right then, so the only thing left to do is to apply this middleware to whatever routes that we want to apply it to. Now we have to export it down here first. So let's say check user, that's what we're exporting and save this. And then inside app.js, what routes do we want to apply this to? Well, I want to apply this to every single get request. So I'm going to say at the top over here, app.get, and it's going to be every route. So I can denote that by saying asterisk inside the string. And that means apply this to every single route. Okay. And then I want to apply the check user middleware. So it's going to do this and then it's going to say next so it can carry on down the stack. And if we went to forward slash and if we went to just forward slash, it would find this. If we went to forward slash smoothies, it would find this or all throughout. If we went to something like forward slash login. All right. So it's now applying this middleware to every single get request. So now we have this in place, we now have access to the user in our views because of the response.locals.user property. Now that is either going to be null if they're not logged in, or it's going to be the user document itself if they are logged in. So we're going to use that in the next video to output user details and conditionally output different contents in the header. But before we do that, very quickly, we also need to require this at the top, this check user function, because we're not doing that currently. We're only getting require auth from the file. We also need check user, otherwise this won't work. So now we have that in the next video, we'll use this in our views.